Hey, this is Steve from Hit It Longer, and I'm really excited because today's the day I'm going to help you cure your slice forever. I'm going to help you do it step by step, really slowly. You'll be able to follow along. In fact, you'll probably be able to play this video um, at the range while you're in the process of doing it. So you'll just do it right along with me. So stick around and let's cure your slice today. So let's look at the five commonalities uh, that slicers usually share. Uh, number one starts right at the grip. People that slice the ball come to me and they'll show me their grip and they'll have what I call a 12 o'clock thumb. So their left hand is in what we would call a very weak position. Um, they haven't had any lessons or any instruction on how to grip the club, so this is a pretty natural way. Just line the thumb up with the logo, okay? And then number two, these golfers tend to swing outside to in. So if we turn these green sticks, Okay, that means my path is coming outside to in, around to the left. That's common for most slicers, but not always. Um, while these five traits are common, you might only have two or three of them that cause you to slice. But we gotta review them all. Okay, number three trait. Slicers are generally too vertical coming down this way. So the club shaft looks like this and often their arms are way out away from their body like this. So it looks like this. Okay. And the last thing is most slicers don't know how to release the club head or have never learned how to release the club head well. So they'll either hold on to it kind of like this. They won't apply enough torque to the handle of the club to get it penduluming and coming around to square up. And that's really the big one. The unfortunate thing and the, the, the real bummer about having a big slice is all the distance that you lose uh, when you have a bad slice. So now that we've gotten uh, all that out of the way, the components of a slicer, the common components of what a slicer does uh, to do that, um, Let's start working on it now. Okay, slicers, are you ready for step one? Step one, we're going to be drilling our grip today. All you have to do in this drill to win is to turn your hand over the top. Okay, move a little closer. So you can see I have turned my thumb to the right of the logo by one hour, which we would call one o'clock. Now from here, I can actually start reading the logo on the glove. That's how I know I'm turned far enough. Notice also another key point is that my thumb is married to the side of my hand forming a crease. So you can't just turn your hand under and then put your thumb over here and say it's at one o'clock because I've got a big gap there. So a lot of people try to cheat and do it that way. You've got to take your whole hand, turn it over the top, thumb at one o'clock, tight crease to the hand, just like that, okay? Now, I like to turn these into mini games. So mini games that have easy rules. Win the game, you lose the game. Uh, in this game, all you've got to do, I've got a nine iron, all you've got to do is hit a pitch shot 50, 60 yards out there with your new grip. So just like this, new grip. And chip the ball out there 50, 60 yards. Now, I have already won the game because I successfully placed my new grip on the club and I attempted to hit a golf ball. So if you had like a little worksheet, you know, page five of um, slicing for dummies, curing your slice for dummies, um, there's two check boxes to win this game. Number one, you put the new grip on it. Number two, you attempted to hit a golf ball. Notice I say attempted because you've already won the game even if you whiff, and you might. You might hit some grounders, shanks, 
Um, changing the grip is not easy, especially if it's a full hour like this. Um, it's going to be uncomfortable. Uh, you're not going to like it. Your hand is going to want to cheat back to the left again when, before you pull the trigger. So don't have to bite off too much here. You're just getting some experience. Just pitching the ball out there 60, 70, 80 yards um, with your new grip. That's all. Let me do one more. Show you what I'm doing again. Going from 12 o'clock thumb, turning the whole hand over to one. Just like that. Hey, if you wanted to exaggerate it a little bit, you really wanted some extra credit, go 45 degrees, get it to 130. Okay. And just pitch the ball out there with an easy swing. Piece of cake. Um, on your own now, you can pause the video. And I want you to hit 10 or 15 more balls using your new one o'clock grip. Okay, step two, are you ready? If you like the grip, maybe, maybe you don't have it, but you, on paper you feel like you can understand how to practice it, that's great. Um, the second thing we're gonna do is learn how to swing a club from inside to out. We're gonna take it really slow. Now I can force, you know, we're, we're flipping to page six in, in um, curing the slot, curing your slice for dummies. That's right. I'm going to put a basket about 18, 18 inches behind the ball to where the inside of the basket lines up with the ball. And uh, for visual effect, you can even take a club and lay it down and about 30 degrees off to the right. So if my target is 12 o'clock, I've got a stick or a club running at one. You can use an alignment stick or an old shaft too. Okay, so I'm going to get this basket in line with the target line. Okay, so like I said, we flipped in the workbook. We're on page six now. We have new rules. The rule is now you're going to take a small club, you're going to pitch the ball out there, and even though your feet are lined up with the target, you're going to swing what feels like on a different line than your feet are on. Okay, so the, the rules of this game are this. You're going to turn your shoulders a little to the right, and you're gonna make a half a swing without hitting the basket and attempt to hit the ball. And if you do that, you win. So let's give it a try. Okay, I won. The basket is still upright. I've won the game. That's, that's how easy it is. You, you can't, you know, the hardest thing about changing a golf swing, most people make it too hard. You try to pull the driver out, do all kinds of hard swings. Uh, you go normal speed. So I'm going extra slow, not taking it back. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm trying to win. I'm, if you were given a million dollars to win the game here, uh, wouldn't, you, wouldn't you fudge the rules in your favor as much as you could? Okay, so I've got the basket in line with the, with the ball line. I'm going to turn right to the stick on the ground. I'm just going to follow with my club that stick line. The basket is still upright. I've won. I, I, win, a, I win a million dollars. So see how easy that game is. I'll do one more for you. The ball is in line with the basket right here. I've got my stick at one o'clock. Okay, line up my feet at the target. Turn my shoulders to right field a little bit and just follow the stick on the ground and miss the basket to the inside. Now what's going to happen probably, you're probably going to hit the ball off to the right and it's either going to push straight out there or it might even push and still have your telltale slice on it and that's okay. We haven't fixed that part yet. Don't worry about where the ball is going yet. We got to put, we'll put it all together in a second. So stop the video again, and I want you to go ahead and hit five or 10 more balls, missing your basket, swinging inside the basket. Don't worry too much about where the ball is going. It's all going to come together by the end, I promise. Okay, so you're back. So isn't this a lot easier when we just take it real slow and step by step? Um, 
don't get too much in your head all at once. I call that the, the fire hose method of learning where they just take a fire hose and just point it right at your face and it's like, how the hell do I just digest all this? You know, you, you, you can't. So now what I want to have you do is combine drills one and two. I want you to take your time formulating your new grip, one o'clock grip, line up to the target line, turn the shoulders to the right, and just slowly miss the basket. Terrible shot. I <laughs> kind of chunked it, but it doesn't matter because I won. I took my new grip and I swung from the inside. So that's the only criteria I have for winning the game. You, you know, I win a suitcase of a million dollars. Okay, what I'd like you to do is hit five or six more on your own, combining steps one and two. Turn off the video for a sec and you're gonna combine your one o'clock grip with your inside out path. Okay, are you ready for the next step? It's like we've, we're flipping over to page eight, slicing, slicing for dummies workbook. Okay, notice that I had my bag over there off to the side. I've now pulled out a stick with a head cover on it. We're gonna add a new rule here because most slicers tend to get vertical. We talked about at the beginning. This is gonna prevent us from getting vertical. It's gonna make us swing now underneath like this and inside out, okay? I don't care what grip you use for now. Let's just do these two ideas. You're lining up the feet straight, turning your shoulders a little to the right so they look like they're on this, from your perspective, they look like they're on this stick line. We're just gonna make a soft, easy swing. Okay, I didn't touch this and I didn't hit the basket. I won the game. Let me show you one more. Gotta slow down take it step by step. You know, who knows, maybe you don't cure this in 30 minutes, that's okay. Some of you may not. There's a lot of information, I know. But maybe you'll just have to practice, you know, stop the video, practice each of these steps for a couple days, come back to it again, that's all right. That's all right. Okay, lining up to the target, shoulders to the right, and just miss Miss the head cover, miss the basket. Easy, right? As long as I go short, back, don't go all the way back to the top right now. Slow down the tempo, both directions, and not try to go for too much distance. Okay, what I'd like you to do next, you can pause the video, figure out how you're gonna position your bag. Hopefully you don't have a cart bag. I hope you have a stand-up bag with legs like I do, because that makes it a lot easier. Otherwise, you can try to maybe borrow one or, or get one out of your garage or go find a cheap one on eBay and get one of these so you can do this exercise easily. Because cart bags, it's harder to get this sticking out like this. Although you could use a stick in a basket if you know that too. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video. Hit five or 10 more, real gentle, just like this. Get the experience. What does it feel like to come shallow and from the inside? Okay, I'm back by the cart now to show you an exercise so you can fix the number four thing that is common to all slicers. And that is that they fail to properly use the wrists and forearms and apply enough torque to get the club face turning over. We can use a cart if we go real slow. You see where I'm gonna stand right next to the passenger side. Hold the club out straight at about waist high. My elbow is never gonna to touch this, okay? You can even do this, and I recommend it, that you put your new one o'clock grip on. Practice it as much as you can without a ball in the way. Okay, great. All I'm gonna do in this is draw the club back to the side of my body where I form a 90 degree angle between the left forearm and the club shaft, just like that. You'll see how the right elbow has got a fold to fit into the gap here. Get it nice and wide, not in narrow. Try to get it out away from you like this. Now, by applying a torque, uncocking torque, I'm gonna uncock the wrist back here, 
straighten the right elbow. Yes, this early. And then I'm going to throw the club head around the pole until I have arrived at a 90 degree angle from the right to the right forearm to the club shaft. So I have 180 degrees of freedom about the wrists. It's causing the club head to catch up to the handle of the club and pass it freely and getting the toe of the club to gently roll over. So let's see that a couple more times. Draw it back to the side of the body. Throw it around the pole. Notice how my left elbow is tucked in and folding. This is going to be the weak point for a lot of you. This may be the sticky point uh, in you curing your slice, especially with the longer clubs, is that slicers tend to pull the handle, which would make me crash into the pole and bruise my elbow. Another really bad habit is when slicers tend to chicken wing it and they're trying to pull and they'd actually miss the pull with their elbow to the inside, just like that. And see how that club face is wide open. Uh, so face to path relationship has been blown and the ball is gonna go way off to the right. So this upper arm segment becomes super important. So what I recommend doing is do this about 20 times. You go ahead and pause the video. A pole works, um, a small tree would work. If you get good at it, you won't even need anything. This is just, but notice how as I throw the club early, real early around the, around the, this uh, cart pole, my left arm folds and I rehinge to 90 degrees very quickly. The snap is going to be back here. Don't wait. Draw it back, snap all the way around. I hit the steering wheel. I knew this would be a risky <laughs> proposition. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video. Start, uh, rewind it, start it again if you need to see that form. And uh, do about 15 or 20 of these. And I would recommend holding the finished position for three seconds so you can feel it and study it. How your left elbow is tucked in and the right one is straight and over the top of it. Okay, see you on the other side. Okay, I'm back at my workstation on the range again. I've done my 15 or 20 wrap the pole exercises. It feels like it's I'm kind of getting it on paper. I, I, I'm feeling what it feels like. Notice in the workstation I'm, I've formed now, I've gotten rid of the basket. I've put the stick away. I don't care right now about path and plane. If I swing vertical, if I swing out to in, that's okay. This is, <laughs> this is what I call sometimes the hook or die drill. It's hook or die. So, what you're going to do is go real slow again with that short iron. Put your new one o'clock grip on. I know it feels, feels kind of crappy, I know. And I'm going to use my new wrap the pole method. And I got that ball hooking right back to the center line. You may not be that good. It may take you um, a bucket or two. Maybe you do it if you go slow enough on the first five or 10 hits. But what's gonna tend to happen is your hooks are gonna be ugly at first. They might, go, they might go too far to the left and that's okay. As long as the ball is curving left, you've checked the boxes and you've won the game for right now. New one o'clock grip. And wrap the pole. Okay, I got that ball around again. So I had hook spin on the ball, I win. Notice how simple that was. You didn't have to try to do everything all at once. You were just trying to do this one thing. Let's do one more. Right now, if you've paused the video and you've tried to do it on your own a few times, you're still slicing. Let me tell you what's probably going on. What's probably going on is you're waiting too long to roll the arms over and release the club head. Usually at this point, I'll have to take a student's club and put it way back here and get them doing this. See, look at that club face. It's so closed, it's almost gonna hit me in the shins. It's gonna go off in this direction. You see, the, the club face is mostly gonna determine where the ball's gonna go. So if the face is open, it's gonna go to the right. And if it's closed, it's gonna go to the left one way or another. That's what we're trying to do right now is make it, make it hook. 
Okay, I got that one hooking around the corner. I was successful, checked the boxes, I took my new grip, and I hooked the ball. Go ahead and pause the video again, give it another five or 10 tries. Um, if you're having a hard time, if you get stuck, this is, this is a, a spot where a lot of people will get stuck. Um, simply go back to the cart or the tree or the pole you were using and go back and do your wrap the pole method just like that. Do it another 10 or 20 times. You might have to go back there a bunch of times. Sometimes I have students that I have to, okay, go back again, do 20 more, do 20 more. So it will take some repetitions and take the ball repetitions real slow. Okay, go ahead and do some more. Um, if you already got it, then just keep watching. All right, are you ready? We've set, we've practiced four separate drills. We've practiced grip, path, shallow plane, and release. So the four things that are most common to slicers, we've knocked them all out. Maybe you didn't have all four of them, but you probably should have gone back and reviewed anyway. It's always good to review the grip and the basic fundamentals of how you are trying to hit the ball correctly. So I brought my workstation back again. I've got my stick still to help me with the feel, the bucket. So now we're going to try to combine. It's got to go real, real slow at first. Real slow, just a little nine iron, trying to hit it 75 yards, 100 yards at the most. One o'clock grip. Okay, lined up at the target. Turn right. Following the stick on the ground, I'm gonna miss the basket and the head cover. And I'm wrapping the going through. Notice how I went very gentle there. Let's do one more. I'll make it even harder. Um, one way, especially if you're hitting on grass, you could hear it on the mat. You listen for the sound. But you know that your swing is getting shallow when your divots are getting very sweepy. I'm hitting a nine iron and I've hit like 25 balls here now. And I've barely grazed the grass. There's certainly not a lot of strip stake deep kind of divots here. Um, even though a nine iron, you know, could get pretty gougy if your swing was very steep. Notice that out in front of my ball, I don't have any big chunks of earth from my divots flying out here. So that's a really good sign that the club is coming in shallow. Club is coming in shallow at this angle. Instead of at this angle, the forces make it a lot easier to do your wrap the pole motion and get it turning over. Releasing the club, getting it squared up is so much easier when it's coming in in the right balance point like this. Uh, when you come in very vertically, which would make you whack this stick, it's very easy to leave the club open. It's just the forces that are acting in the system at that point. Let's do one more. One o'clock grip. Shoulders. Swing on the one o'clock line. Wrap the pole. Okay. I got a nice push draw out of that one. It started off to the right, as you can see, and it was trying to work its way back to the target again. It was great. So that's just a nine iron. Now we got to get to the hard part, which is a longer stick. So um, try this a few more times before you move on. And anywhere you get stuck and you feel like your, your shots are not coming out, like I'm describing mine or you're seeing mine, just rewind again. Go back a step. It's okay. It's like a game of shoots and ladders. Treat it like it's, it's a kid's game. You'll, you'll learn it. Um, it is a kid's game. You know, learning this is a kid's game. You just, just go up the ladder one rung at a time. Don't try to go up here with the fire hose method. Just little bite-sized pieces. So it's okay to go back. Not everybody learns at the same pace. No worries. If you're ready, let's move on to the driver. Okay, so now we've got the driver out. It's, 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 it's nervous time. It's like moment of truth, right? No, 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 it's no pressure. Maybe, maybe you don't have this right this second. If you don't, you just move back a step, a couple steps, and you go back to the smaller club again. Don't even worry about it. But uh, it'll be really fun if you leave the range today, if you're at the range following along with this. If you could reach, um, leave the range, go to your car today, having hooked a couple balls from the inside. Won't that feel awfully good? Um, so that's the goal now. I've got the driver out. I have my workstation. Simply a stick and a head cover. 
I've got my basket and you could just use a club on the ground uh, turned out about 15 or 30 degrees to the right a driver is going to be 300 percent harder to do all the same stuff as you with the soft nine iron don't go at it full bore you could just dink it out there 150 60 yards not a big deal let's go through our steps again remember our one o'clock grip right there all right setting up to the target lining up the feet now still got my one o'clock grip just gonna tilt my shoulders up and to the right gonna go very slow and easy okay so I was successful there for the most part in that I didn't hit this I didn't hit this so I almost had it I had an inside out path but the face of my club was square to that path so the ball was simply a straight push that's actually a good sign it's better than swinging outside in and steep and making the ball do a low pull so not a big deal let's try it again line up to the target square up the shoulders stay inside and under all right one more notice how slow and gentle I'm going here it feels like my chest is lined up with this stick it might not be but it feels like it new grip turn I can even make this harder if I needed to I could bring that all the way to here I'm gonna swing underneath it and inside the basket that's the goal wrap the pole to get the club face shut That turned over nice that would have been running right down the right center of the fairway I was successful I, I won the million dollars because I was able to swing with an inside path and put hook spin on the ball now that wasn't the prettiest shot ever and your good your shots at first may not be pretty either they might be snap hooks they might be pop-ups it's gonna feel pretty awkward but stick with it let's do one more squaring up the shoulders swinging the inside and under and wrapping the pole very slow motion through the impact zone just to try to get that motion correct the faster you try to do this the more likely it is that you're going to revert back to your most comfortable way of doing it so you're going to get to a point where you're going to start to be kind of cocky maybe and you're going to go bam just like that on the way down you're going to flop the ball somewhere and uh, you'll know whoa hey wow that was an interesting phenomenon i must have come back steep it on the outside again huh and again it's like shoots and ladders hey you just went down a little shoot you get back in the game you just keep pulling the dice you keep moving your piece maybe you'll get a ladder again here in a second i'm going to put a little more speed into it now square the shoulder one o'clock grip under all right I think on that swing I probably about got about 265 or 270 on that one you might not get there you might have had to pause the video even for a couple days I hope it's today I hope you got it done today and the goal for today was just being able to hit draw spin on a driver while you did it from the inside and there's the proof if you had this right on the ticket line it means your club had to have been attacking from the inside so that's the goal if you didn't do it today well you'll get it tomorrow i promise um, i've used this same 
procedure successfully. 99.9%, uh, .9%, there's only been one person that using this technique, I haven't been able to cure a slice. And you know, he was a, he was a, he was a slow learner, so. <laughs> He just didn't stick with it long enough. You, you got to have a little patience for this. Um, if you're finding yourself impatient, or you find your, find your blood is starting to boil and you're getting frustrated, that just means that you need to bring it down. You need to go back down a couple levels, go back to a small club, small swing, slow motion swing. You're at the point in Karate Kid where you're just doing, hey, paint the fence, paint the fence, wax on, wax off. Um, you're going through the fundamentals of the motion. You're not ready to get in a fight with three guys all at once. You're just not, you're not good enough at it yet. You just gotta, you just gotta keep breaking it down. So hopefully, and you, you let me know, hey, send me a, uh, send me an email, write to me. I'm at steve at hititlonger.com. Um, let me know how this worked for you. I'd love to hear if you were able to carry your slice with this uh, strategy, that would really make my day. And um, Please subscribe to my channel, hang around for more videos. I had a lot of fun doing this and I hope it really helped you. Thanks.